Hello, everybody. This is uh, Newton right here. And, uh, of course, myself, Paul Beckwith. And I'm going to talk about the cold blob or the global warming hole just south of Greenland, which is indicative and resulting from the AMOC slowdown. Now, a new paper has come out that looks at observations and compares observations to climate models, a whole bunch of climate models. And uh, what it shows is that the only way that decrease of temperature in the ocean water south of Greenland can occur is if the AMOC is significantly slowing down. So models have to show that the AMOC is slowing down in order to reproduce that. Uh, a couple things is this has been going on for a long time, about a century. And it's also uh, a result is that there's freshening of the water in that region, not just at the surface, but deep down. And the temperature cooling of that region relative to warming of the oceans around the planet is uh, extends down to 3000 meters or more, which is about 10,000 feet. So we're talking about a very significant event here. And we measure the AMOC. I'll talk about how we measure it. And uh, for the last 20 years, we've had very good measurements from a so-called rapid array, which is consists of moored buoys, uh, things moored to the ocean floor, measuring water flow. And uh, the, the uh, volume flow rate measurements are in Sverdrup. One spur drop is a million or 10 to the six cubic meters per second. So we're talking about enormous flow rates. One spur drop is roughly equivalent to the volume, the cumulative overall volume of rivers around the world, the water flowing in those. That's, that's sort of a ballpark number. So Newton and I are going to uh, discuss this. Hey, hey, don't be shy. Look at the camera. Okay, look over there. Yeah. Good boy. Okay, so let's get into it. This is a new paper that just came out. And uh, it basically confirms what we've kind of known for a while. But it's very significant because the AMOC, of course, is very significant. So, so let's go to the start. So this is a paper I came across. And then I've been doing some AI checks, so perplexity.ai, all, all the links will be in my description on the video. Tell me about the ocean cooling just south of Greenland. And uh, I clicked on images. Um, and then in the next uh, slide, I'll show you the answer, basically. But these are some of the images. So you can see this cooling just south of Greenland here. Uh, here's a sort of an explanation um, of where the cooling is occurring. You know, it would require a reduction of the thermohaline circulation or the AMOC. So less warm water comes up here as a result. Cold water can cool and collect there. It's not being heated by the Gulf Stream marching upwards. Um, and so there's lots of illustrations of what's happening. Different temperature and salinity profiles and so on. Okay, so let's, uh, what does the AI actually say? It says that the, okay, so these are the key points. Just south of Greenland, we have a distinct region of the North Atlantic Ocean. It's been cooling over the past century. So a hundred years that bucks the global trend of rising ocean temperatures. So we call it the cold blob or the North Atlantic warming hole. And it's of concern because you know, the AMOC and the general ocean circulation, the thermohaline circulation, thermo being temperature, haline being salt, the whole circulation of the ocean, recharging of the water in the depths, uh, all those things, the way heat's transferred from the equator to the poles, etc. all these things are, are depend on the ocean currents. So we've been seeing a weakened ocean circulation the primary driver behind this cooling is the weakening of the AMOC. 
Okay, uh, it transports warm, salty water northwards, um, and uh, that's at the surface, and it returns cold, deep water southwards to replenish the cycle. When the AMOC slows, there's less heat carried north. Okay, so the, the north, north is warming greatly because of temperature amplification. This is in the atmosphere, so there's less heat going up there in the oceans. We're getting cooler sea surface temperatures south of Greenland. There's also accelerated melting of the Greenland ice sheet. And I just um, was fortunate enough to be in a... Uh, in a, in a video, recorded video uh, yesterday with uh, Peter Wadhams and uh, the group Facing Future, Dale with uh, the group Facing Future. That video will be out probably in a couple of weeks, that interview. We talked all about Greenland, the ice, the politics, everything about Greenland, the mining, you know, and so on that's being planned. Um, so the Greenland ice sheet and Arctic glaciers have poured vast amounts of fresh water into the North Atlantic. So it's less dense than salty seawater. So it disrupts the sinking of the cold, salty water that helps drive the AMOC. So circulation is slowing. And of course, there's many atmospheric ocean interactions. The AMOC slowdown is a major factor, but also the atmospheric circulation, the jet stream, subpolar gyres, there's complex interactions between the ocean and atmosphere that contribute to the formation and persistence of the cold blob. It's not a short-term anomaly or a patch of meltwater. It's a persistent large-scale cooling of up to about half a degree Celsius or one Fahrenheit over the past uh, century or so. Most of the world's oceans have warmed, but this is a place that's an exception to that. That's the, the global warming hole or the cold blob. It's about 55 degrees north latitude, 35 degrees west. And of course, it affects weather patterns, sea levels in the region, marine ecosystems, right? Like the Gulf Stream keeps Western Europe's climate mild. A reduction of the Gulf Stream and the AMOC means a change in, you know, cooling of, of a lot of the northern hemisphere. Okay, so and then there's a, a summary table um so it so the ocean cooling south of greenland is a clear signal of major shifts in the in the amok it's driven by a combination of ice melt freshwater influx changing circulation so it's an area of intense study okay um and it's so important in fact that um something called the rapid array was was um, deployed and has been operating for 20 years so here it is 26 degrees north, 26 and a half degrees across the ocean. There's sensors that measure the water flow. So there's sensors that are moored to the bottom, that are at various depths of the water column, measuring the strength of the AMOC, okay, in that region. So let's look more about the rapid array. Um, it's an oceanographic monitoring system deployed across the Atlantic Ocean at 26 degrees north, I think it's 26 and a half. Anyway, that ballpark. So it measures the variability of the AMOC, which is a critical component of Earth's climate system that transports heat and influences weather patterns, particularly in Europe and North America. So it's a series of moorings and instruments goes from the Bahamas to the coast of Africa, crosses the entire width of the Atlantic at 26 degrees north, directly measures transport of the Gulf Stream in the Florida Strait using an undersea cable, moored instruments tethered to the ocean floor, monitor bottom pressure, water column density, so temperature and salinity, and other key parameters on both boundaries and on either side of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. They maintain the system by annual expeditions. Instruments are recovered, serviced, redeployed, and data is used to estimate the strength and vertical structure of the AMOC, combining direct current measurements, satellite wind data, geostrophic calculations. So it was deployed in 2004. It's been operating just over 20 years. It's revolutionized our understanding of the AMOC the variability, the strength can fluctuate dramatically on time scales much shorter than previously assumed, sometimes even within a single year, but the trend is to a slowing. 
Okay, so it's a collaboration of the UK National Oceanograph Oceanography Center, University of Miami, and NOAA. Um, and there's been similar monitoring systems put in other parts of the Atlantic and other ocean systems. And uh, it's, it's in its 21st year of collecting data. So very, very important uh, system. Okay, so let's talk about the peer-reviewed paper now. So it just came out. It's in Nature, Communications, Earth, and Environment. Weakened Atlantic meridional overturning circulation causes the historical North Atlantic warming hole. Okay, so this is a study that verifies the connections between the two, and it characterizes um, the, the, the cooling of that region, the salinity of that region, and relates it back to the reduction of the AMOC strength. So most oceans over the globe have experienced surface warming over the past century, but the subpolar Atlantic, right, just south of Greenland, is quite otherwise. You know, it's been getting cooling. The sea surface temperature cooling trend to the south of Greenland is known as the North Atlantic Warming Hole, the NAWH, and it's raised debate over whether it's driven by the slowing of the AMOC. So this paper conclusively shows that the answer to that is yes. So they use observations as a benchmark, data sets of observations, and then they use climate models as a tool to demonstrate only climate models that simulate a weakened historical AMOC can reproduce the observed cooling and freshening in the warming hole region. So the AMOC Atlantic overturning circulation has slowed between 1900 and 2005 at the rate of about minus, between minus one to minus three roughly sphere drops per century. And a sphere drop is 10 to the six cubic meters per second. Remember, one sphere drop is the cumulative flow of all the rivers in, in the world. Um, so the Atlantic overturning slowdown causes an oceanic heat transport divergence across the subpolar North Atlantic. Fancy way for saying, you know, it's cooling there, it's warming everywhere else. That cooling is partially offset by enhanced ocean heat uptake, right? The absorption of more solar radiation into the oceans. So the cooling is less than it would be without that effect. Okay, so let's have a look at the data. So this is sea surface temperature. This is degrees Celsius per century change. And most regions are experiencing significant warming. Here's Greenland, North America, Europe. But this region here has had sea surface temperature cooling. Um, this is the observations. This is one of the models. This is another model. So this, this model is clearly missing it. This model is capturing it, but not as strong. You can also look at practical salinity units. The average for the ocean is 35. This is practical salinity units is parts per thousand. So 35 p parts per thousand is 3.5 parts per hundred. Parts per hundred is percent, 3.5 percent salt. In the as average, but the saltiness is decreasing. The PSU is decreasing. It's becoming fresher in this region, saltier over here, and the model does capture that. The bulk, the the bulk of the models, but some of them don't. Okay, uh, these are some of the results. Um, they do some what they call fingerprint um, analysis, um, which is like the difference of between the Gulf Stream um, temperatures and the global warming hole temperatures. And they show um, there's, uh, you know, the, as the AMOC um, strength, um, as the AMOC decreases in strength, that area gets cooler. Um, and as it decreases in strength, that area um, gets um, the practical salinity drop. So it gets fresher, so fresher and cooler. Okay, um, and uh, so they show, you know, here's, here's some more uh, data here show, comparing these two regions. I think this is, um, uh, this is, you know, this is different model runs. AMOC uh, slowing, AMOC, uh, if AMOC, okay. So, so th this is the temperature and this is the salinity, but they, interestingly, they show the depth profile. And you can see 
the cooling of the global warming hole is extending down past 3,000 meters to 4,000 meters, right? It's cooling. The rest of the ocean is warming over here, but we've got this global warming hole here, and it extends significantly to great depths. And then this is the salinity. This, the, the water is fresher all the way down in the, to the same depths, you know, 3,000, 4,000 meters. It's, it's uh, pretty amazing um, that this, it's so, the volume of this thing is huge, right? People don't talk about that too much. They tend to focus on the surface temperature, but that water is cooling all the way down to the deep abyss. And I think, I think this gray area is where the seafloor is. Um, so it's extending almost all the way down through the water column. And uh, there's some results of, you know, they look at heat budgets and you get the same sort of thing here, uh, cooling in this region. See, this is uh, salt budget, salinity budgets, freshening over in this region. Okay, so there's lots of data on this. And then they show the, um, this is the AMOC strength here. Um, and, uh, you know, over time, 34 spur drip down to, you know, just above 28 spur drip over about 80 years. So it, there is fluctuation. We've actually measured it very accurately in the last 20 years uh, with the rapid array, but it's definitely weakening significantly and it's been doing so for a while. So they do some statistics and modeling and so on. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into all of the, the details of this. The paper's open source, so I'll provide the link. But basically, uh, you know, we've been measuring AMOC directly from this rapid array. They say at 26.5 north in the North Atlantic, right? So it, it looks at, it shows that the strength of the AMOC quantitatively relates to the meridional heat transport and freshwater transport. Um, and they talk about reasons and so on, why the AMOC might be slowing down and so on. But, you know, the gist of it is that the Arctic is warming much, much faster. So there's less heat, like directly. So there's less heat being transferred by the oceans up there. It's sort of like the chicken and the egg thing. Both things are happening and they reinforce each other. Okay, so it's a very, um, you know, it's basically conclusive scientific proof um, to the best of our knowledge and ability that the AMOC is actually significantly slowing down and it's resulting in these artifacts like the global warming hole um, here, a cooling of the ocean surface here all the way down to the seafloor, also a freshening of the water indicating that big changes are underway in ocean circulation. So thank you for listening please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. Or if you want to get a t-shirt showing the ocean current patterns, um, I've got one right here. Okay. Uh, I don't know why you can't see that. Connecting the dots, abrupt climate system mayhem, and it's showing the uh, ocean currents with the uh, AMOC and so on on it. Um, I've been wearing this particular shirt frequently for, you know, I guess on and off for a couple months and it's been through many wash cycles. It's good quality, uh, material. It, 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 you know, everything, nothing's fading or anything after months of use and regular washes. So, you know, it's decent quality. Okay. Well, thank you for listening and, uh, bye for now.